BGFX. Welcome back to the channel. I'm coming at y'all with a brand new video, man, and it has been a minute since I posted here on the YouTube channel. But I just want to say thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be breaking down Euro USD shorts that I took this past Friday. I ended up taking this a little bit later, and it was about 10 o'clock, a little bit after 10 o'clock that I took these entries. And this was a 1.5 pip stop loss with a 15.5 pip reward. So overall, this was a solid trade. You know, it wasn't like a long term trade. This literally only lasted 53 minutes and it was about 10 R. So we're going to break this down. I definitely think that I can get to a lot of the educational side of things as well as the psychological side of things so that anyone watching this can get some um, some good value. Right. So you could take something away from this video and just digest it and then apply it to your own trading. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're currently looking at the 30 second time frame. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go up to the 15 minute and we can see that we were short term bullish, which is what actually initially gave us this push up and we were long term bearish, as you can see. Right. So let me go up to the four hour time frame and you can see that we were obviously long term bearish here on Euro USD. Now, essentially what I wanted to understand, right, is where was my buy side control coming from? All right, so where was this bullish, um, where did the start of this bullish move actually happen? And also, why did it happen, right? I always wanna know the why behind each move. So we can see that this was a, a spike up. Now, if we measure it, this was about, you could say nearly 100 pips, right? If you wanna round it off, you could say that this was 100 pips. So we understand that this is where buyers initially took control, at least for the short term, when it comes to comparing it to this long-term downside pressure. Now, if we look to the left here, we can see that this short term bullish reaction was simply coming from this demand zone. Now, we might not see the demand super clear here on the four hour, but what I'll do is I'll come down to the two hour time frame and we could probably see this much better, um, a little bit better. You can see how we had that, you know, short term range. We had price push to the downside. We had that push to the upside. Now, we also created a short term low here which can be viewed as liquidity um, and essentially what we would want to see right if this low did create itself and price failed to mitigate we can understand that when price draws back into the level it can clear this low out and potentially based on the intention buyers can regain control once again and that is what we've seen happen for euro euro, euro usd uh, when it comes to looking at it from a, a smart money perspective supply and demand liquidity and things like that. So essentially this was our low and this is where buyers initially took control. And then I also wanna ask myself, why did this spike to the downside happen? And when we um, view this from the two hour, you can see that we had this supply up here, which is where sellers took control. So what we're seeing in the market basically is us being in a long-term downtrend, buyers taking control at demand, sellers taking control at supply. So since I understand that price has been long term bearish, essentially I want to read the lower time frame and that's going to allow me to understand whether I want to buy or whether I want to sell. So if we come down to the 15 minute, um, the 15 minute is what I really like to use for my zones. I'm actually going to refine this a little bit because I understood right that looking at Euro USD, this was our overall market structure high. Now I didn't believe this was our high because of the the two hour zone we were just looking at i actually refined it a little bit and we could see that we had this candle here which was that supply zone so we had the range we had that manipulation above the range and we created these short-term highs right here but we actually didn't mitigate into the significant area which allows me to basically perceive it as we can have sellers begin to take over uh, back at that price and that's exactly what we've seen happen. So once we've seen this high um, And once we've seen this pullback, we can see that it cleared um, This low right or these lows here um, But essentially even though it cleared the low we can see that buyers still held control at this demand Now this would have been a simple trade opportunity here on the lower time frame um, Within this you could have looked for some type of longs depending on your bias. I personally did not go for those longs but one thing I do know is that sellers are currently holding control at the zone right here above, which I did draw out. So what I would do here is I would just put supply zone. 
Now, when it comes to supply and demand, it's, it's a very simple ideology that comes behind it. Um, if supply is greater than demand, we see price push down. If demand is greater than supply, we see price come up, right? That's one of the Wyckoff laws. That's like a fundamental belief with a lot of what we know as you know modern day smart money concepts. So we see the supply and demand, we see the reaction, which is basically telling me we have sell side control. And then we also see the bullish reaction, which is telling me we have buy side control. So since buyers are coming in from the low, you know, with intense volume, sellers are coming in from the high with intense volume. How do I actually know who's going to be correct? The truth is, I don't really need to know. The, the main thing I'm looking for is the intention on the lower time frames, right? And, and of course, the higher time frame narrative, the higher time frame direction is important. But since I'm someone who trades the, the one minute time frame and the seconds time frame for my entries, I don't really need to be in alignment with the complete long term direction, but I do need to be in alignment with who is in control. So we could see that there was another supply zone, right? That was created here. So we have this little gap in price. Um, and then we create this little high right here. Um, and some people would, of course, view this area as um, somewhat of a imbalance. Now, me personally, when we seen price trade down off into this area, there was going to be a good chance, at least from the way I was viewing it, that we were going to see more bullish intention. However, when our mitigation occurred, this was already 1215. I personally don't trade around that time. But if you were viewing the market from a perspective of buying, it would be okay for you to buy because you have this at least as a reason for why you believe price is going to come higher. And it's also coming off this demand. Now, of course, you would want to utilize a lower time frame to look for your entries there. Um, and that would be only if an uh, entry model was met. And then, of course, like we see buyers take control. That's right after these lows were taken. We see buyers take control again. We see buyers attempt to take control again here. Now, what I was actually looking at here on the 50 minute is that since buyers took control here only temporarily and then it failed, what was actually the driving force of this? It was this high mitigating this supply. So when you're looking at these supply and demand zones, as you read the intention, you're going to be able to realize how long price sits at each area. If price is making a transition, right? of these demands being respected into all of a sudden us breaking past it, we have to understand that most likely it's happening for a reason, right? We're seeing a shift of intention and it's us, it's on us to play, uh, play that intention, you know, with the right belief based on your bias. So we know that sellers essentially began to take over right at this high right here. Then we have another mitigation here. And then after we did mitigate, I'm going to I'm going to clear all this off really quick. But after we did mitigate, we can see that we created the new zone here. So I'll just draw it out. We created this new area here. So when I'm bring the I'm going to put the replay tool on really quick so we can see how this basically would have looked in real time. So essentially, I understand that sellers are taking control from the high buyers are attempting to take control from the low. And in the short term, sellers are beginning to generate control again in the markets. So also looking at our low and looking at this demand zone here, we can understand that price has basically been stalling um, around this area. So if we come to the five minute, you can see that there's multiple tests to this low, which basically tells me that there's not much intention behind it. Price is being um, price is gravitating to it. Anything tested multiple times usually becomes liquidity and anything fresh it doesn't have to be strong if it's fresh but it does have the potential to be strong so mainly what i'm looking for are strong key levels so even if i want to refine this a little bit more i can bring this here and we can see that this is a much more defined range before that push off and then that drop and then also what we take a look at um, to, to kind of mix in more with our bias, not only do we know that sellers took control from this high, um, buyers failed to control this demand, and it basically came up into here. And also, we know that this demand is showing us multiple tests. We also could see the intention being created that these highs were left equal. And then potentially what I wanted to see was a run above these highs into our supply area. 
Now, depending on what type of trader you are, it would be okay for you to just take an entry with a limit order. Uh, me personally, I'm only looking for lower time frame intention. I like trading a lower time frame. I feel like you can really, um, not only does it build confidence, but it it gives you more framework around your entry. Now, of course, it's going to differ from each individual. Um, if you don't have like that much time to spend on the charts, then I would say look to master um, using limit orders and minimizing chart time and just getting the most you can out of it. But if you're able to look at the charts, you know, I recommend a one minute time frame if you know how to use it. You know, it's definitely something that comes with a learning process. But just to break down what we had going on, just to draw it out myself, we can see that we have fresh supply created. We had these temporary highs and then essentially our low point, right, which is here. And then when we look to the left would be here was not showing us super bullish attention. It was stalling a little bit, showing a little bit of indecision. And then potentially when we were coming back up within this area, this will be our point of decision, right? This is when our decision making process will really come into effect on a lower time frame. And that's when my lower time frame entries allow me to actually get into the markets uh, before the move happened. But I want y'all to understand that this pattern here is not really the key. You know, the, the, the key is understanding who is in control already based off of our overall range. So we see like this is the current price range we're in. Um, now, often ranges like this where price begins to slow down, you know, you'll start to see stuff like this happening. Buyers will come into control. It'll fake out. It'll turn back over again and it'll just be like demand turning into supply, etc. So ranges are often going to provide good opportunities if you know how to play them. Uh, but we can see that, right, sellers took control, buyers attempted to take control, and we're just seeing gradual clues, right? Buyers holding the level temporarily, dropping off again, and then equal lows, equal highs, liquidity taken, and then liquidity taken here, question mark, right? So that's what we're, what we're asking ourselves. So just to go down to the lower time frame now, um, we already understand that sellers are dictating control, at least for the short term. And then just to do a quick refresher, this is all coming off of a supply zone here. Um, so the question now poses itself. And that question is whether or not this supply is going to be held and if sellers are going to remain in control and take price lower. So once again, this is kind of somewhat of the pattern we're looking at. So I'm going to clear this off now and we can go ahead and go to like the one minute time frame really quick. So now that we have all of that information, we now want to gather more information in alignment with what we believe, but now on a smaller scale of things. So we can see that if you want, you can refine a little bit more. You don't always have to refine like that, but um, we can see that we have this up candle, sharp drop. We have little temporary highs here and there, and it's, it's, this area has never been mitigated. So now what we see is a short term area of structure where we're trading up bullish. And now I've identified in the moment a 30 second demand zone. So I do know that if this demand level holds, that's telling me buy side control, buy side volume. Right. So that's telling me buyers are still holding some type of weight within this market. And if buyers are holding weight in the market, that would tell me my trade is a loss. So essentially what we're seeing now is a little bit of a range at this demand zone. And I want to see some type of failed intention um, from these buyers. So if we press play a little bit, you can see how we begin to trade down a little bit. Now, this is already telling us, right, that buyers are not really holding too much weight. Because remember, if price was bullish, we would have a fight of buyers here against sellers here. And if price was to come higher, it would most likely trade higher from that demand zone. Now, what we're looking at next is we see that there's failed intention of buying. Um, I'm just going to put here like 30 second demand because it did hold weight only for a short amount of time. Not enough to look to long it, um, not enough to look to actually buy into it. But we're seeing this intention for lower prices. So this is going to be failed demand. Short term intention for lower pricing. So that's basically um, 
what my thought process is going to look like through all of this. So this is our current low. And then if we press play, you can see we trade back a little bit more. Um, we begin to see a range in we're now triggered in. Okay, and then also looking, you can see that we create this short term high. A couple of weeks here, and this is grabbed into the mitigation, and we're just looking for price to come lower. So if we press play a little bit, you can see that we begin to play out. And at this point, my stop loss is already at break even. And I was looking here to the left and ask my, asking myself, right, are buyers going to hold this level or are we going to see that sell side momentum continue to drop off? So essentially what we're seeing is supply and demand um, and the entire framework just repeating itself everywhere. And then we begin to see this. So this is when I actually took my profits. I did not hold this. I did initially want to take it all the way back down to the bottom of this range. But when we look at the time, this was 11 o'clock right this was 11 o'clock so i decided just to take profits right here at this demand zone and then i believe after i took profits this did range for a little bit right so price ended up slowing down and then we see price push up a little bit and it's basically just stalling and keep in mind this was also a friday so it wasn't like i was looking to hold this too much longer because fridays and mondays not always, but are typically known to provide um, lower volume. Of course, it's always going to change. Everything's going to be different. But just to come to the one minute, we can see that me selling this for a one to 10 in about an hour wasn't just a pattern. It was understanding who's in control and reading all of this intention in the short term. So just to go to the telegram really quick so you guys can see my markups and things like that we can see that this is when i sent my chart out now for a lot of my trades i do do the signals um next week there's going to be signals you know similar um or you could basically say the same trading plan but um there's this is what i sent so to take a look at it it's actually pretty blurry let me go to the link we'll see it yeah this is much better so we can see um october 15 2021 9 21 a.m and then let's just go over here so you can see it's fine, 921. 921 AM was when we were trading at the bottom of this range and we were starting to see intention that buyers were failing to gain control. So just because price comes higher doesn't show us bullish intention. What shows us intention is gonna be the reaction around the areas of supply and demand relative to the structure that's created, right? It's always gonna be giving you clues, but the only way you can really soak up these clues is if you're reading the markets from like a carefree state of being. If you're too worried about what if you get stopped out or what if it doesn't go my way? What if this is the second loss in a row, the third loss in a row? Uh, what if this is happening? What if, what if that's happening? Um, let me go to Instagram and see if this trader caught this. You know, it's like so many things that can happen in between. If you allow those things to distract you, it will be very hard to read intention properly at least when looking like looking at structure on like the 30 second time frame or the 15 second or the one minute so it's really all comes down to focus and just mentally aligning yourself um and just understanding your expectations before you even enter the trade but not to talk about psychology yet i'll get into that in a little bit but this is what i sent let me go here and we can see that essentially i want to see price come up i marked out my high here where we, we began to stack up um, and essentially, I wanted to see us show some short term bullish momentum into a sharp sell off. Or if we did not show up here, we were most likely going to trade up higher into this 15 minute supply. Now, what we did see was price come right up into this area where I looked for confirmation. I took my shorts. Now, this was Friday. I posted this. So it wasn't like we were going to drop all the way down on a Friday, although it was possible. But since it was Friday, I decided to take my profits back at a return into the bottom of the range, especially since it was already in the afternoon. So to go back into my Telegram group really quick, um, just to scroll down, you can see one of my students called it. Shout out to him. And then also here is my um, chart, which was a few more minutes in. But let me actually go to the link. And you can see that this was the exact markup that I'm showing you guys Um except I just reinforced it for the video, but 15 minute supply coming down. We also have supply here, which wasn't mitigated, but we can see that we had short-term reaction to this demand 
then that demand was broken. So that's showing failed intention of buying. And then we're sitting here ranging at demand, which shows me weak intention. And then the highs were just more of a clue. And then I refined a little bit more for the 30 second block. And then the short term structure and the fractal confirmation was what was what basically led to me taking my entry. And then I was I was believe I believe I was about five R in profit during this screenshot. And this was my next um, markup right here. So just to go to it, let's go to the link. And this was basically once the trade was finished um, right here at 1118. So I closed out. I was initially, like I said, wanting to target lower, but I only wanted to target to the bottom of the range because it was a Friday. So I feel like exits are just as important as entries nonetheless, because you can get the best entry in the world. But if, if you try to hold on to it forever, and not take profits and then where does the importance of the entry you know come in so decided to close that early took the profits and that is how i ended the week um and then like i said looking at the 15 minute we're just showing intention now i understood that buyers were coming in here also understood that sellers were coming in here but i took one clue um which actually led me to believe price was going to come lower but i could see this low and i also seen that this demand was not uh, not quite mitigated yet so it's also possible that we come lower all the way down to here but that's just one of those what if type things because i know that buyers for this current correction are still in control but on an intraday basis i was able to get in with friday's control so it's all supply and demand it's all understanding who is stronger as time progresses but that is it for eu um, now, one thing I want to go through as well is stuff related to my trading plan. Now, I'm not going to go through my full trading plan. I just want to go through the psychological aspect of it uh, because I feel like psychology, man, is it, such an important thing. So this is basically what I like to read to myself a few times out the week as a part of my plan, as a part of my approach. So we have like pre-market understanding, read this as needed before active trading sessions. And this is mark douglas philosophy um not all of these are mark douglas but this is basically inspired from things that i've watched from him um seminars books quotes anything psychologically related i'm really really recommend just study um the type of things that he dives into it's, it's really one of a kind information you know everyone says emotions shouldn't be involved involved in trading and things related to that but he really dives deep into how to actually reprogram yourself to understand how to trade from like probabilities because brains like our brains the human brain is not wired for trading at all it's, it's not but once you reprogram it it makes things so much better so it's all mental you know a good strategy is important understanding your approach is important but psychology is is also very important so the first thing i read to myself or first piece of understanding at least is that there's a random distribution between wins and losses that define a trading edge so i know one of two things can happen at the end of each trade i can win it or i can lose it i also know that when i win trades i aim for big risk to rewards awards like this friday i took a one to ten i know this i know that my trades that are wins are fruitful they pay me well i know that my losing trades are always cut short one pip two pips three pips but the one thing i don't know is that am i gonna win the next trade or am i gonna lose it so there's a random distribution that goes into this because the markets are not always consistently moving the same way one week you might find five things that meet your plan and you win four and lose one and then the next week you might find two things that meet your plan and you lose one and you win one or maybe you lose both of them. So the key here is to not be reactive to each individual trade, but view it from a place of like, I'm gonna take the next 25 trades, then I'm gonna assess the outcome. I'm gonna take the next 50 trades, then I'm gonna assess the outcome. And I think the main problem, especially in the beginning, but anybody can work on it with time, is that they're, they're so reactive to each trade. If they lose a trade, it's it's the end of the world. And then it completely clouds their thinking to even focus on the next trade. But like I said, your your next um, series of wins and losses is almost random because we don't know where price is going to go next. We have systems, we have beliefs. But when it comes to the distribution of what you win and what you lose, 
in the short term, we don't have control over it. So it's getting to a point of like a carefree state of mind where you don't actually care if you win the next one or you lose the next one. The only thing you care about is like thinking as efficiently as possible so that you can make money throughout the next 20 trades. So that's like the main thing. Uh, so I hope that's really helping you guys, you know, with the psychology stuff. Um, and then like you don't need to know what's going to happen next to make money because, um, of course, it's going to it's going to come from a series of trades. And then like traders have learned to associate price price delivery with pleasure or pain based on individual subjective belief. Um, so I will ta detach my ego and experience freedom. This is another crucial one that helps me. Um, it's just like it's just my perception whether I'm happy or, or mad or sad that I lost a trade. It's only my perception. That was a trade somewhere else that took the opposite end of mine. So it actually doesn't matter when it comes to how to view the markets. You know, if you want to view the markets better, you want to trade better, you want to be more profitable. I feel like cutting out this pleasure or pain thing helps a lot. You know, and that doesn't mean don't be happy for your wins. Like, no, celebrate your wins. If you have a good week, celebrate it. Like, withdraw and buy something with it. Celebrate but I feel like um, the pain aspect, once you cut out this pain and you understand that it's like inevitable to take a loss, it will change everything and you will like really experience freedom with it. And then I completely accept the risk of my trader. I will not take it. The backstory behind why I typed this was because in one of the Mark Douglas videos, there's a seminar and he was saying that when people in a casino and like they're playing a slot machine, every attempt in that slot machine they are not expecting a win. You know, deep down subconsciously, they know a win is possible and they know they'll be happy from a win, but they're not completely emotionally decimated because of a loss. And it all comes down to because they accept the risk. And he basically says that when we perfect these strategies or when we try to perfect these strategies, we try to, we start to feel like it's, it's canceling out the risk. But once you accept the risks, the losses won't really affect you um, on the same way. And then the last one is just red folder news. Don't trade during it. Or at least for me, this is just my plan. But like I said, I just want to share this to see if I could help you guys and put y'all in the right direction with it. Now, that was it for Euro USD, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. This was a 1 to 10 risk to reward, like I said, literally in about an hour. Um, and I also have more videos coming out for you guys. I have a um, educational video, which is just going to be education, talking about like a perspective switch when it comes to reading the markets, technical analysis, and smart money. And also, I just want to get like a face-to-face -face video in with you guys, just psychology. And also, in the future, I'm going to look to do vlogs. So I don't mean to drag the video on too long, but I hope y'all enjoy something. You know, I hope y'all enjoy the trade. I hope y'all enjoyed the breakdown. I hope y'all learn something new. As usual, if you did learn something new, man, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Comment, you know, any type of feedback. I hope y'all enjoy, man. It's been BG. Without further ado, I'll catch y'all in the next one.